Hello everyone, I'm Rekha from Cardoon Skincare. Thank you very much for watching us this week. We got interviewed Paula Simpson. She is um, um, a well-known nutrition expert and she's also behind a lot of, lot of successful brands as an innovator and a formulator. Uh, we're going to talk about her last book, Good Bacteria for Happy Skin. It got immediately our attention. Um, as you know, uh, Cardin Skin Care not only promotes uh, clean and plant-based um, ingredients, high-performing ingredients, but we also do care about all the ingredients that we take inside and, and has a nourishing impact on our skin. We will walk uh, through a couple of questions together with her to make sure that you will have a practical guide um, out of this, uh, this interview. Thank you very much for following us. Uh, please uh, enjoy our interview with Paula. Thanks. Story you get into this area. Yeah, I mean, it was an evolving process. It wasn't, you know, um, I didn't know that I would end up here, you know, when I, before I started university. I mean, through my teens, I struggled with um, chronic dieting and just, you know, misinformed information about nutrition and it was affecting my health. And um, so I decided to go study nutrition in university. So I have a, a degree in biochemistry, uh, nutritional sciences. Um, and then I went into more holistic nutrition. So studied um, more traditional and herbal uh, botanical based nutrition. Um, so kind of an Eastern Western philosophy uh, mm -hmm. is really what I, you know, live by now. Um, so did that. And um, from there, I evolved into, I mean, skincare and, and um, aesthetics and fitness were always a part of my lifestyle. Always enjoyed it. Um, and, you know, went into uh, working with medical spas and um, spas and um, cosmetic surgeons and dermatologists specializing in nutrition focused uh, skincare. So I, I had some years of experience with that. And then I also had um, some regulatory um, scientific consulting experience that really helped um, me create uh, my expertise in formulation. So de mm -hmm. developing functional foods and nutraceuticals and formulating from concept uh, to shelf. Um, so, you know, today what I do is I work both B2B, the business, helping mm -hmm. brands build out formulations um, to make sure that they're on trend and competitive within the global market. And I also work uh, B2C with clients, um, nurturing and helping them, you know, bring their, uh, bring their, their, their skin health, to help them feel and look their best, you know, lifestyle focused um, through nutrition, supplementation, what works for them, you know, based on their own biochemical individuality. So um, I've been consulting um, with Nutribloom as my business, and I've been doing that since uh, 2011, so almost 10 years, and um, I absolutely love it. And uh, I guess, well, my book, I was approached in uh, 2018 uh, by a publisher who read some of my articles because um, mm -hmm. I work a lot with the media as well. And they had, um, I, I written an article about gut health. I've been talking about gut health for some time and its relationship to skin. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about the microbiome and they were quite intrigued. And they said, well, do you want to write a book about the skin microbiome? I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> so that, every, that everybody can understand. <laughs> That's, that's it. I think, you know, my philosophy is I've always come from, you know, scientific background. So always mm -hmm. looking at the science, right? So when they first asked me to write it, I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the most complex topic. I'm like, I don't know if I can write such a complex topic and, and deliver it in a consumer friendly way that's practical. Um, so, you know, I, I did think about it for a couple of weeks, but um, I decided to take on the project. And, uh, it, you know, I spent about six to eight months just diving into the research. So the whole focus um, of the book was, you know, the skin, micro the whole concept of microbiome health is, is really fascinating. And it's been really um, accelerating over the last 10 to 12 years. Um, but that being said, it's extremely complex. And, you know, for people to really kind of utilize it in a practical manner um, has been cha challenging, you know, even, mm -hmm. even even probiotic um, supplements and skincare brands have a difficult time marketing their, their products to, to um, create some interest from the consumer because the, the messaging is, is so complex. So, 
my, my goal to write the book was, you know, as you noted before, make it practical for people. So yeah. take that, take that science and re regurgitate it and present it in a way that's useful and practical. And so they don't have to read, you know, 10 million scientific articles to understand, you know, how it's going to benefit them personally. So that was my goal. Every uh, client is unique. How can you actually organize it in a way that every individual can get the most out of these books and, 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 and the advices that you give? Well, I mean, it's, it's really, you know, you take the, the book and, and you can, uh, you know, utilize um, recommendations through nutrition and, and diet, um, probiotic uh, skincare, even there's chapters that I discussed, you know, how to read a label, because a lot of people don't understand how to even read a supplement label, or even what to look for in a probiotic based skincare label. So I really even tried to break down that uh, component mm -hmm. in, in, in products. Um, but you know, if there's specific skincare concerns, so with the microbiome, there's been a correlation found with dysbiosis or an imbalanced uh, gut microbiota. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, maybe an over um, presence of bad bacteria that are that are directly or indirectly affecting the skin. So skin conditions associated with microbiome uh, dysbiosis are acne, uh, photo aging, so accelerated uh, skin aging. Uh, mm -hmm. a topic, uh, dermatitis, eczema, uh, even dandruff. So I break the book into like different uh, conditions, skin conditions, and talk about some of the um, bacteria or microorganisms that could be, um, you know, potentially causing these skin conditions. So what you want to do is get the microbiota, both in gut and in skin, back to a balanced state. Mm -hmm. So I create those kind of step-by-step -step protocols in my chapters. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so, so how do I know, for example, if I have a healthy microbiome? Is, it, is, yeah. it, is, it, is there a test uh, that I have to take? And is it easy to, to take? And, you know, what, what do I do with the result? Or, you know, how can I get then optimize it? Like, what, what, how does the process look like? Yeah, I mean, it, it is, it is, um, there are certain tests that can be done, biome tests, like a lot when I work with on my one-on-one -on -one with my clients, I do get uh, biome testing for them. Um, so, you know, there, there's, there's those types of clinical tests that you can do. And then there's also uh, symptomatic uh, conditions um, that you can look at with, with a client to determine, you know, kind of what is out of balance and what we could, you know, work on to kind of bring the microbiome back into a balanced state. I think it's just, it's a different concept, right? Because we've been trained for years about um, personal care and hygiene and skincare and products. And, and it's kind of like throwing out that whole concept of, you know, ultra hygienic practice, practices for skincare, excess cleansing, excess exfoliating and treatments, right? I mean, the, yeah. the, whole, the whole concept of the microbiome really, goes against the grain of what we've been taught, right? Um, so what we're typically finding and seeing is that we're, we're breaking down the skin barrier and that, that external visual barrier that, you know, helps protect the skin from the environment, the pollution, the sun rays, whatnot. Um, but, but with this excess, excess products and cleansing and treatments, the barrier is getting broken down and the skin microbiome resides on that outer layer, that skin barrier. Mm -hmm. And these living microorganisms work to help protect your skin from environmental toxins and pollutants and stressors, right? So mm -hmm. when, when the barrier is getting broken down, you're breaking down these, these healthy microorganisms that generally reside on your skin to help it keep it healthy and, and resilient against the environment. Um, so that's one perspective of the microbiome. The next one is gut health. Um, our westernized and, and modernized diets are very... Um, harmful to gut health and the gut microbiome. So we know like certain artificial sweeteners, for example, are, are um, kill off those good bacteria in the gut. Mm -hmm. So quite harmful. Um, trans fatty acids, processed foods, chemicals, and, and um, additives are really harmful to a healthy gut microbiome. So they increase the risk of um, poor immunity, um, mm -hmm. you know, leaky gut syndrome, and, and all, all conditions that relay to the skin from the inside. So mm -hmm. um, to talk about bacteria, I mean, the title of my book, the publisher, you know, so we'll, well, we have a great title of the book, Good Bacteria for Healthy Skin. And when I first heard it, I was like, I'm not sure if I like this, <laughs> like this title, because it really, go, it's, it's a bit opposite of what we're used to hearing, right? Well, I can tell you that it works, because when I was talking about 
the title and the book with my husband, my son picked it up and the, in yesterday we were outside and there was a, a little boy and he was like, the mommy was like, yeah, you need to wash your hands, blah, blah, blah. And Ruben, my son said, yeah, mommy, but there are, there are good bacteria. Sell them. There are good bacteria. So absolutely, he, he remembered because maybe because of the oxymoron of like bacteria is we didn't, we didn't know that they can be good as well. I think it works. Perfectly works. Good. Well, I'm glad to hear that because when I first heard it, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know how people are going to respond to it. But yeah, there are good bacteria and there are good um, microorganisms that help to nurture and balance our health, both from within and on the skin. So it's a really fascinating science. And um, I really enjoyed writing the book. I mean, it was intense, obviously, because of the yeah. complexity of the topic. But I really enjoyed it. And I, I worked really hard to make it practical for people. So when they, when they finish reading the book, they can say, well, you know, I, my skin is health concern is, is this. And now I can start looking for maybe this type of skincare regimen, um, start adding these foods to, to my lifestyle and, and diet. And, and your lifestyle has a lot to do with the skin microbiome too. I mean, um, it, lots Absolutely. of studies, studies have shown people living in urban cities um, you know, have a weakened and less diverse skin microbiome than those who are out um, in rural areas. So there's a big correlation to go out and be in, in green space and do some gardening and get your hands dirty and allow your skin to connect with nature because it actually nurtures and promotes a healthy skin microbiome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, actually, all my colleagues, you know, popping in, in, a, in a video, <laughs> they were always like, Reka, I mean, you're stuck traveling and you look better than ever because definitely i mean you live in a completely different environment with a completely different um uh, daily routine and that actually has uh, a tremendous impact right absolutely so, yeah so if we go back just one one sec um before we go on what we can take in on just when we put on our face so I think a lot of, lot of um, other women and men would be like happy to see through and simplify the, the skincare landscape that we have today. Because even though that we, you're just very selective and you say, okay, so I'm going to go with clean um, and products. I'm going to go with plant-based products, right? So even if you um, really just uh, try to narrow them down, there are still like thousands of them right yeah. and more and more beauty uh small breads they are popping up right and so it's really hard to navigate and to find actually the right product for yourself well so my first question is that is 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 there a right product or is it more like the way we eat that sometimes you know i need a, a more orange or a carving for sweets or you know it's like you need to um put more variety on your skincare as well and as long as you follow certain certain rules so what's your great, yeah that's a great question you know um from from the literature and and the science it, it really stems from within there's stronger correlation to what you're uh, consuming through diet and potentially supplementation, um, getting um, a balanced gut microbiome is going to have a stronger influence on the structure, function, and appearance of your skin, including the, the, the diversity of your skin microbiome. Topically, when you think about it topically, um, it, it can help rebalance. Um, you know, so for example, if there are blemishes or eczema, topically applied um, probiotic skincare can help rebalance those microorganisms to help you know, um, minimize the, the condition. Um, it also probiotic type uh, skincare can also help uh, build the protective shield um, mm -hmm. you know, and encourage just a, a balanced skin microbiome. But for farther reaching effectiveness for chronic skin conditions, it definitely comes from diet and supplementation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is on your shopping list, like weekly shopping list that you, <laughs> <laughs> on grocery, right? It's on grocery yeah. side that you yeah. won't that you won't miss. Honestly, I'm a big fan of um, a Mediterranean-based diet because the science is just like <laughs> there's a plethora of research out there. So um, I'm dying to come to Italy for that reason. Um, so you know, just the, let me know. I'm happy to happy to have you here. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, just you know, really whole foods. Keep it simple. Versus you know, obviously. There's so much we can do in regards to eating healthy, right? I mean, we have busy lifestyles, like you said. So 
I often follow the 80 20 rule and, and recommend that with my clients. Listen, if you and, and say, if you can't follow you know, kind of like the healthiest eating plan all the time, that's okay. But if you're doing it 80% of the time, mm -hmm. you know, that's, that's, you're going to get a result, right? And you're also going to enjoy life because we want to enjoy food, right? We, uh, I think we've really become orthorexic as a society where people are like, what fad diet should I be doing now? What should or shouldn't I be putting in my mouth? And it's really, it, it's disturbing when I, when I hear people talk, I'm like, wow, you really just want to enjoy food again. And um, so I, I try not to be too restrictive uh, with people. But when you think about on my shopping list, definitely lacto-fermented foods. I love Greek yogurt. I love my smoothies, um, my um, organic greens, um, you know, dark berries. I'm a big fan of berries, uh, you know, so uh, smoothies, uh, fresh juices. I like to make my green juices a few times a week um, in regards to uh, meats. You know, I, I choose generally choose leaner uh, proteins, mm -hmm. uh, fish. Um, and, and, and try to keep my foods as clean as I can. So buy organic as much as possible, even grow my own. So gardening in the seasons, you know, growing my own vegetables and that I really enjoy doing and herbs. I use herbs a lot, fresh herbs, because it's mm -hmm. just such an easy way for booster nutrition, like just adding um, additional nutrition to your foods without even realizing it, right? So yeah. I recommend a lot of fresh herbs and I talk about all those, um, you know, recommendations in my book as well. And there are certain ones that actually encourage um, healthy gut uh, and, and balanced gut microbiota. So it's quite interesting. There's some that have anti um, pathogenic, you know, uh, abilities to, to, you know, ward off a harmful mm -hmm. bacteria in the gut. So herbs go a long way. And in fact, you're from Hungary. I love paprika because of yeah. the, the content of zeaxanthin, um, carotenoids. And then, you know, you have your healthy oils and fats. I mean, back in 20 years ago, everything was non-fat 20, 30 years ago. Um, you know, everything was non-fat and then you started to notice people's skin started getting scaly and dry and you don't realize that the vitamin E and, and all these amazing fat soluble vitamins in the oils um, help contribute to plump uh, glowing skin, right? Mm -hmm. So um, it's really about balanced nutrition. It's not about restricting or going extreme. And, you know, one type of diet particularly may not work well for another considering yeah. you know, if there's a certain health condition um, so you really have to take that in account. So, you know, it, it's just about balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Do you actually take supplements and what are the supplements that you think that is hundred percent true for, um, everybody that we miss, uh, that we miss out the most with the yeah. modern investor and diet? I mean, yeah, I think supplements definitely um, support healthy aging and, and skin health and um, help you feel and look your best um, all around. Uh, no, I think if there's there's one, I mean, based on the, the concept of the microbiome, I think a high quality probiotic, symbiotic is, is good, um, you know, with more than um, 10 uh, billion uh, CFUs, for example, um, you know, it, it is solid. Uh, Mm -hmm. general bacterial species we hear a lot about is acidophilus and bifidus. Um, but what we don't know is that there are other, so many more species and subspecies and strains that do specific conditions or specific mechanisms for skin mm -hmm. conditions mm -hmm. or health, right? But if you're looking just for an overall general well-being, it would be, you know, a good probiotic. Um, in regards to antioxidants, you know, there's, there's the carotenoids and the polyphenols. So there's, mm -hmm. you know, those, those dark berries, and then there's the, the, the tomato and astaxanthin and zeaxanthin lutein. So, you know, lots of research uh, showing not only through diet, but supplementation help to protect the skin from oxidative stress, uh, environmental pollutants, um, and, and, you know, which causes accelerated aging. So definitely um, some form of an antioxidant is good. And mm -hmm. in regards to pill form or uh, powder, I mean, you know, it really depends on the ingredient of the supplement because there mm -hmm. are some that are more stable, that need more stability mm -hmm. um, and are better in a pill form versus a powder. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I really think that's a, um, a consumer preference. Mm -hmm. And then there's the, the, I talk about the, the kind of the three caveats. So, you know, the, the probiotics to support microbiome health, antioxidants, and then the structural integrity of the skin. So we hear a ton about collagen now. Yeah. And, um, so, you know, hair and nails, we hear about biotin. Um, so skin firming, keeping the skin smooth and firm. A lot of people, um, are on the, this collagen bandwagon. So, 
Um, yes, it, it, it has some uh, benefit. We know that it can help support skin uh, health and, and keep the skin firm and smooth. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think there's a little bit of a collagen overload, right, happening in the market. So do we need it? Um, yeah, but not necessarily at the doses that people are recommending. So mm -hmm. a, lot of, a lot of the brands will be like, you know, 10 grams or more per serving. Well, recent research is showing that, you, you know, you can get benefits from collagen peptides for, you know, 2.5 grams, right? So mm -hmm. it's not, not necessarily more is better. And also looking at your protein in your diet. So yeah. really, you know, amino acids, vitamin C, the things that help naturally build collagen. So you know, again, looking more to nutrition versus just swallowing down a supplement. But when you're looking at supplementation for skin, it would be obviously microbiome support um, through um, some kind of probiotic, symbiotic, um, antioxidants, and then, you know, structural and, and firming ingredients such as collagen, protein, vitamin C, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about the consistency versus, you know, periodic? treatments um or 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 with microbiome and, and good ha gut health you really need to just put it in your head that it is a lifestyle like if you want to keep it healthy then you have to you know think about that like 80 20 percent rule but in your entire life right and it doesn't go for from, from period to period yeah, I, that's a great question because, you know, with supplementation and nutrition, it is going to take longer to show the benefits. It's not just like when you apply something topically, you get the immediate result. And that's, that's been one of the problems, especially with the North American market to kind of jump onto the whole kind of nutri cosmetic concept is that, well, I'm not seeing results right away. People want to see things right, you know, the benefit right yeah. away. So the education and, and messaging around how nutrition works for skin health has been, you know, gradually getting better and better, but um, people do need to understand it's going to take a little bit longer. I mean, our skin cells renew every 28 days, for example. Yeah. So in order for a supplement to work well, one is your digestion needs to work well. So if you're not digesting or metabolizing the nutrients well, you're not going to get any benefit to the skin. So it really starts with gut health. And then if you're, when you supplement, um, you know, it, it's going to take, you know, one to four months before you start really noticing um, a benefit. And that really mm -hmm. also depends on the, the formulation, how effective the formulation is, how stable it is, right? So, yeah. um, you know, that education component is key. And, you know, it, you can start at kind of a, a therapeutic dose um, of a supplement and then wean down to a minimum. Um, you can go off it um, and periodize it. It really depends on on the type of product you're taking. But there are certain general ones. Yeah, general well-being would be probiotics because it just helps mm -hmm. to stabilize and support immunity and gut health and whatnot. Mm -hmm. That would be and, and and another issue with probiotics is it's not it's like antioxidants. You don't see the benefit, right? It's mm -hmm. it's kind of a once you a, don't have it, then you feel Exactly. Mm -hmm. Whereas collagen has done so well in the market because people start, or biotin, for example, because people start to notice, oh, my hair, my nails, right? So, mm -hmm. my, you know, things feel like stronger. So um, that's why, you know, that, that kind of tangible feeling or, or benefit it tends to, you know, one of the reasons why the collagen has done so well, I think. But with probiotics and antioxidants, you'll notice like over time, they'll be like, wow, you know what? I'm not as bloated after I eat or, you know, I'm not breaking out monthly mm -hmm. in my cycle anymore like I used to. So it's mm -hmm. those little like, kind of indirect things that you need to watch mm -hmm. for. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, we, we need to shift from the catchy short side to a longer inner side right yeah. and so we have yeah. to learn to observe ourselves we talked about gut health right and so what we what we can take and we were talking about the skin um care that we uh, we can apply on on our face and our skin what about for example exercises you you you're also a fitness coach you you've been into the the fitness life as well you've been exercising so um, do you do facial yoga? Do you uh, practice with some of the Asian facial tools uh, like Gua Sha or Jada Roll? So, um, because that's kind of like our third element, right? That we, yeah. we promote uh, and we recommend to do. So, what is your um, feedback or practice? That's really interesting. We share the similar philosophy, and it's been such a pleasure speaking to you today. Um, 
I actually just finished my semester. I was professor for a spa uh, program and I was talking and teaching about um, spa trends, global spa trends and Gusha and the roller were like on the topic just a couple of months ago to my class. So, um, you know, I, I'm a big fan of that because it really helps to promote blood flow, lymphatic mm -hmm. drainage, um, smooth out the skin, you know, um, stimulation. It's almost like exercising the muscles. You're like exercising the face. Um, so yes, I do um, practice that. Um, I also like the um, the, uh, the the micro needling. I have a mm -hmm. home device, the micro needling, because you know just the, it, uh, the mech better, yeah. The, yeah, and the mechanism of action. It has to you're puncturing, and then you have to um, repair the skin repairs, and when it repairs, it produces more um, collagen and, and whatnot. So and, and and the products go in deeper into the dermis. So yeah. I really am a big fan of um, home tools like that and mm -hmm. um, more for, you know, that type of stuff. Um, microcurrent. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the new face. I like that because it just, you know, helps to kind of, again, support the penetration of, of the products um, that you're using. So I am a big fan of um, kind of Eastern. Eastern. Yes. The tools emerging of Eastern and Western philosophies for, for beauty and skin health. Yes. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, we, we, we are a big, big fan of them as well. <laughs> it just kind of like completes, I would say, the, the routine and your practice. Absolutely. All right. So thank you very much.